Hi, it's Mark Ganser, Technical Account Manager with EAC Product Development Solutions with this week's Tip of the Week. Uh, if some of you haven't tried it already, there's a new tool in Creo 2 called Freestyle. It's a divisional model, freeform tool. Kind of interesting to play with a little bit. So what I'm going to show you today is a few of the probably lesser known uh, tricks and tools in there that might be handy in your experimentation. Now the first thing is if you're playing with Freestyle, a lot of times with that in an industrial design, you end up getting some sort of an image from an industrial designer that you're kind of designing to. Well, attaching an image to use for reference in Creo 2 is a lot easier. You go to the View tab, and under Model Display, grab Images. Pick a plane you want to put it on. Add an image there. Let's put it on the front plane. And I'm going to put an image of a bottle that will come up later. Now, this is something before you had to do. You had to make a surface and you had to make a special texture of that image and paint it on that surface. Now you can just tack it in. Now here's the hidden tip. Let's look at this thing straight on. A lot of times you get an image like this and you go, great, I really have no idea how big this thing is and I really got it designed to a certain size. Well, there's this button right here in this view tool called Fit that allows you to scale that image either in some free direction, horizontally or vertically. So I can drag these handles up to the top of the image and the bottom of the image I got from this designer and let's say he we know for sure that that's going to be 400 millimeters the unit of my model so I know exactly that that image is sized to 400 millimeters and then I can move that typically where I want it and say okay so I've got that image I can design against and play with later now a couple more tools we will go directly into freestyle to do that here is another version of that model. I've got that image in here already. Typically when you go to freestyle, and let's go into that right here, it's right in the surfaces area, you start out with some sort of a primitive shape. So when you say I want to add this primitive shape, I'm going to go with a sphere. You notice when you add it, it always pops on the default coordinate system. Now that's a little big, so let's resize that. The main tools you have in freestyle are transforming or moving one of the faces or vertices or scaling it. Now if I go to scale, typically I can grab any one of these directions and scale down that primitive shape. Here's the trick. If I hold the control key down and grab that arrow, it scales all directions at once. So it scales the model down. Now maybe that's not where I wanted that primitive shape to come in. As I said, it goes in the default coordinate system. You can get around that kind of hiding at the bottom of the primitive menu is an options. So if I grab that options, I can say, you know what, I don't want things to go to the default coordinate system. I've got this other coordinate system where I'm basing things. You also have some default settings for how much that 3D Jagger increments that we'll look at in just a bit as well. So now when I say OK, I'm going to re-add that shape by just clicking on it. And when you do that, you notice you get a warning. One of the limitations of freestyle is in one freestyle feature, you can only have one primitive shape, usually not a restriction with how you can add things. Notice now it added it to that active coordinate system. So you can use that as a trick to get closer to where you want to not have to reposition things so much. I was talking about increments just a second ago. Now when you when you scale one of these things, you're kind of looking at it and go, well, gee, it's kind of the, the happy thoughts dragger, but I'm really, I'm really not sure what I'm doing here. Where there's a tool in manipulation called increment. If I pick on that guy and drag one of these indices, it gives me a relative scale, percentage, how far I'm going over there. There's 300% or three times. That kind of gives you a relative feel for, okay, how big is this thing in, prepare, in comparison to where I started from? And let's add a little more material on one side and can use this right pop-up to add something there. This increment also works for transforming a surface. Now you've got a different scale going on there. It's not percentage. It's more of an analog counter. Doesn't seem to be tied exactly all the time necessarily to the default model scale but at least it gives you some sort of comparison, okay, of how much have I shrunk this down? Where did I start from? 
and where am I now? And actually this may be, in this specific case, millimeters. Looks pretty close either way. I want to bring up another model and show you another trick in the system. I'm going to grab this freestyle feature here and edit the definition. Now normally when you pick one of these surfaces, you've got that dragger there and you can really tilt it along any of these orientations here and you can also drag it as well. Now what if you came into this though and you say, well, I want to drag it, but I, I don't want to be perpendicular. Well, there's a trick to get around that. Zoom in on this face here. I can pick that rotational ring, right click, and say reposition. Now I can actually tilt the dragger without affecting the geometry. Go back in, turn off the reposition. Now I can drag that in any of those new directions. That's kind of a neat trick if you don't want to go normal or to the surface or um, in the direction of the surface as well. Now one thing we'll finish off with today is something that's kind of not as well known in freestyle. It's called a join surface. Now here's another model. I'm going again with that model where you can play around with this freestyle shape. I'll go into the edit definition and you've got all of these different uh, surfaces you can drag and reposition and play with, but how do I get a model to close in on itself? Well, a couple different ways to do that. For example, we want to make this bottle with the, looks like a detergent bottle with the handle molded in. I can pick multiple faces and I've got this nice command whoop, right here called connect. Connects those two faces together. And let's drag that a little more in, lining up with that image we have. And we can play around with that as well. But that's another one of those nice tools. Another way to connect something like that is not necessarily through the faces, but another trick. And let's show you that on a different model. One of the commands you have in the system is to mirror geometry. So let's redefine this freestyle. And I'm going to look at this guy straight on from the top and I'm going to pick faces. Now normally it's picking everything. Edges, vertices, faces. I want to just faces. I'm going to grab all the faces of that top edge and I'm going to say I want to mirror those. And I'm mirroring them along that plane. You see that when I mirror everything that was in the top it supersedes and goes through to the bottom. Once those are mirrored I'm going to add some more detail. I'm going to overmesh the grid a little bit. And let's, you know what, let's turn off these Dane amenities, make that a little clearer to see. Let's pick this edge right here and say split. I'm going to add a couple splits in there. So you can see we have more grids, more faces to play with. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go back to the face command. And since this is mirrored, I can pick that face and say, you know what, I want to join those along the mirroring plane. And that is another way of connecting the material and putting a nice loop in your freestyle model. Now if you have any questions on something we've done here today or any of the other tip of the week videos, go ahead and contact one of us at EAC or better yet, leave a comment right under the video and we'll get back to you. Thanks and have a great rest of your day.